Okay, so welcome to part two of this video on how to construct a um, metric space from a pseudo metric space. Uh, so just to recap, we had a pseudo metric space which we called um, x bar, uh, and uh, the metric we were called the pseudo metric we were calling d bar. And what we did is we divided it up, we partitioned it up using uh, an equivalence relation, uh, and uh, we put all elements. Uh, which were distance zero apart uh, together in a single equivalence class. And we were then going to use these equivalence classes. We were going to put all these equivalence classes into a new set over here. Uh, so we'd have equivalence class E1, equivalence class E2, uh, equivalence class E3. Um, I'll just complete it now, equivalence class E4. Um, and E5 and E6 down here, so E5, E6. So we get all of these equivalence classes together, and of course there might not be six of them, there could be arbitrarily many. Uh, but we put all the equivalence classes together in a new set, we call this set our new set X, and we define a metric on this set, and the way we do it is we define the distance between E2 and uh, E3, let's say. E, well, actually, let's make it more general. Let's say the distance between EI and EJ. The way you do it is, uh, let's say this is EI up here, and let's say this is EJ. You simply pick any two representatives you want, so let's say this is an element x and this is an element y, and uh, basically, uh, so you pick any two representatives you want of the um, equivalence classes, so you pick a representative of the equivalence class EI, and you pick a representative of the equivalence class EJ, and you work out what's their pseudometric distance between one another, and basically that is the number you're going to use as the distance between these two equivalence classes, and we show you in the previous video that it, this value does not depend on which representative you pick, i.e. if you pick a different representative from each of the equivalence classes, so uh, let's say x prime and y prime, uh, the distance between them, the pseudometric distance between them, is the same, and therefore this is well defined, because of course if, if it depended on which representative you were using, then it wouldn't be well defined at all, because you'd have different values depending on which representative you pick, so that wouldn't be a good definition at all. So it's only a good definition because this holds, and we showed that this holds uh, because of the triangle inequality, and because x and x prime are, and y and y prime are distance zero apart from one another. Okay, uh, so what we want to now make sure is that we've got this definition of distance, it is well defined, but we want to make sure that it actually obeys the axioms of a metric space on this set of equivalence classes. Okay, so the first, uh, the first thing we have to ask is the first axiom of a metric space, we have to make sure that the distance between any two equivalence classes, EI and EJ, uh, is in fact an element of the non-negative real numbers. We have to make sure it's non-negative. And uh, that follows very quickly from this prop uh, the definition. Um, because the distance between EI and EJ is um, just uh, the pseudometric distance between any two representatives. So just pick two concrete representatives, let's say x and y, work out their pseudometric distance from one another, but we know that the pseudometric distance is always a non-negative number. So it implies from um, from the fact that, uh, from the definition, straight from the definition, we get that uh, the meta that this new distance function must also be non-negative because of its relation to this old pseudometric fu distance function. Okay, so property two. Uh, let's say we've got asked for the distance between one equivalence class, EI, and itself, EI. So we want to know what is the distance between an equivalence class, EI, and itself. So, by definition, you have to pick a representative, or you have to pick two representatives this time. You have to pick a representative from EI, and then pick another representative from EI. Of course, you could use the same representative, uh, so you, you, could add, you could say that this was d bar of x and x, more generally, it will be d bar of x being one representative and some x prime being another representative. So p just pick any two elements of an equivalence class and ask what is their pseudometric distance between one another. Well, that's going to be zero because they're in the same equivalence class. The way we defined these equivalence classes was we said put all the elements together that are a distance zero apart from one another. So any element in this equivalence class will be a pseudometric distance away from any other element, zero. Uh, so when you pick any two elements of that equivalence class and ask what is their pseudometric distance part, it's going to be zero. So this uh, 
is true that it's zero. Now the biggie, because what was not true in this pseudo-metric space was uh, positive definiteness. We want positive definiteness to be true if this is going to be a metric space. We want the distance between EI and EJ uh, well, sorry, we want that if the distance between EI and EJ is going to be equal to zero, we want that to imply that EI is equal to EJ. Okay, so this says that if you take the um, distance between any two distinct equivalence classes, i.e. any two equivalence classes that are not the same, uh, that it must not be equal to zero. So the only way of getting a distance equal to zero is if you are actually asking what's the distance between an equivalence class and itself. And that follows uh, because, um, because if you take two equivalence classes, let's say EI and EJ, which are disjoint, distinct equivalence classes, uh, then uh, any representative of here, uh, in here, uh, you pick any representative of here, let's say um, d bar of x, and you pick any representative of here, so let's say y, that cannot equal zero, because if it was equal to zero, then those two, re uh, those two elements you picked, the re one representative from this equivalence class and the other representative from this equivalence class, they'd be related. They would have a, a pseudometric distance zero, uh, which cannot happen because they are not in the same equivalence class. So if you pick any two disjoint equivalence classes, and ask what is their distance between one another, it cannot equal zero if they are disjoint, basically. Uh, so that tells us positive definiteness is true. Okay, so three, let's check symmetry. The distance between EI uh, and EJ, we want this to be equal to the distance between EJ and EI. Well, uh, from the definition, this is pick a representative of the uh, equivalence class EI, let's say X, and pick a representative uh, a representative of the equivalence class EJ, take their pseudometric distance, but by the axioms of pseudometrics, this is just the um, pseudometric distance between Y and X, and you could say that that is the distance between EJ and EI. So symmetry of the metric of this distance function comes from the symmetry of the pseudometric, and that, uh, similarly the triangle inequality is going to follow from the pseudometric distance. Uh, so uh, let's draw another picture. So Let's have one equivalence class here, which we'll call EX this time, another equivalence class here, which we'll call EY, and a third equivalence class here, which we'll call EZ. Okay, so we want to make sure that the distance between EX and EY is less than or equal to the distance between EX and EZ plus the distance between EZ and EY. That's the triangle inequality. We want to show that. Well, if we go to the definition, the distance between EX and EY, the way you work that out is you take a representative of this equivalence class, another representative of this equivalence class, and you ask what is their pseudometric distance between one another, and that's what this is going to equal. Now, we can pick another element, uh, another representative of Z, and, um, uh, so sorry, we pick a representative of this equivalence class Z, let's call that uh, the element Z, and uh, by the triangle inequality that holds for pseudometric spaces, the distance, uh, sorry, d bar of xy is less than or equal to d bar of xz plus d bar of zy. So basically, what I'm now doing is I'm saying, okay, we're now working in this pseudometric space. Pick a representative of the equivalence class ez, uh, and basically, what just because this is a pseudometric space, the pseudometric distance between x and y, uh, so this distance here. Um, to get the colour pens out of it. Oh dear, what's happened to that? Uh, this distance here um, is going to be less than or equal to the distance from x to z, which is that distance there, here, uh, plus the distance from uh, z to y, which is that distance there. Okay, uh, so we're just using the pseudometric properties of the um, pseudometric space, so the axioms of the pseudometric space, which do obey the triangle inequality, uh, and that tells us this. Uh, now what we can say is, okay, that implies, since uh, the distance between EX and EY is equal to the D bar of X and Y, uh, we can say that the distance between EX and EY is less than or equal to D bar of XZ plus D bar of zy, but the distance between d bar of x and z is equal to d of ex 
EZ, the reason being that if we want to work out what the distance between the equivalence class EX and the equivalence class EZ is, all you have to do is pick a representative of this equivalence class, EX, uh, which we could, you, you know, you can pick whichever element you like, you, we might as well uh, pick the element X, uh, so let's pick the element X, and for uh, for this equivalence class EZ, let's pick the element Z. Uh, so this is indeed equal to that, and similarly, uh, this is equal to the distance between EZ uh, and EY. The reason being, if you want to work out what the distance between EZ and EY is, the way you do that is you pick a representative of EZ, I'm saying pick the element Z, uh, and you pick an, a, a representative of Y, I'm saying pick this element Y that I had originally. Okay, And that in therefore implies that the distance between EX and EY is indeed less than or equal to the sum of the distance between EX and EZ plus the distance between EZ and EY. Uh, so this uh, new metric that we have defined on the set of equivalence classes um, on, on the pseudo-metric space uh, does indeed obey the axioms of a metric space. So what we've seen is how uh, from a pseudo-metric space you can construct um, a set on which you can define a metric space which is very, very much so related uh, to the original pseudo-metric structure on our original set. And as I say, this is very, very similar to the concept of uh, creating factor groups uh, from uh, larger groups. Um, or creating fields from rings. You, you see this, this done a lot in uh, abstract maths.